Hello my friends, I'm really excited for this video today and forgive me for being a little enthusiastic, but I really love this topic and get excited to talk about it. So today I wanna to share with you five ways that you can enjoy vintage art more in your home and in your life. I think that we live in the most amazing era of time. And of course it comes with a lot of difficulties that we can um, choose to focus on. And it's also a little hard to avoid, but if you think about the many incredible blessings we have because of what the internet has provided, I just kind of stand in awe of the times that we live in. And vintage art and the accessibility to it is just mind-blowing these days. And the more I dive into it, the more I'm amazed. I've even like studied vintage art and artists that lived long ago, and I've learned that usually when a, a piece was commissioned, the whole like society would stop and come and view this piece that would really only be displayed in royalties homes or with people with a lot of money um, so it was not very common for just anyone to have incredible art in their homes however in this time that we live in we have access to countless amazing pieces that have been created throughout all time and we can display them and print them and just kind of infuse that beautiful art into our home and into our lives and it really is phenomenal to think about. So today as I share just these five ideas of ways that you can bring art more into your life, um, I hope one of them kind of sparks your interest and leads you down a path to expose yourself more to art. But in case you are kind of unfamiliar with where you can find this art, um, if you are unaware of what's called the public domain, many pieces that I think are like over 90 or 100 years old are free for the public domain, which means we can use them as we wish, um, even in like business sense, because of just copyright rules and laws that if they're in the public domain and if they're old enough, we have access to them, which is amazing. So we can print pieces like the Mona Lisa and display it in our home or the Last Supper. We have access to this incredible artwork to use however inspires us. And I just think that is amazing. So one of my favorite things to do is actually just dive into the public domain, kind of go down bunny trails of um, researching artists or finding styles and eras that I love. I have found a trend that a lot of the art from the 1800s and even early 1900s is about my favorite. Those just really speak to me. Um, but you can even go back further than that. I love some of the religious art from like the 16 or 1700s. That's really fun to find and discover. Anyway, so I won't go too much into how you can find it today. I do have some videos on um, sources for digital art, and I think I did a video on how to resize it for your frame TV if you find free art that way and want to display it that way. But today I'm going to give you these ideas for how you can bring art more into your life. So perhaps the most obvious and I think the best use of vintage art is to print it. Print it and display it in your home, um, frame it, um, just print it and put it in a binder for you to look at and to share with your family. Like any way you can get this art from the computer screen to something tangible that you can hold, I feel like makes it most impactful. So that is absolutely one of my favorite ways is to find vintage art and print it. And what's amazing is that there are so many online shops like if you check Etsy um, or there's other vintage art shops that have spent hours curating beautiful pieces. So you can find a shop that you love. It only usually costs like a dollar or two to get the digital printout and then you can send it to a printer 
If you happen to have a really nice printer at home, you can do that. Anyway, this art is so accessible, even if you don't know where or how to look in the public domain. Um, and I'm really excited to share that I actually, this is such a passion of mine, I kind of got sucked into finding winter art and I found so many beautiful pieces. I decided to make a little collection of my own to share with you. So if you wanna to go to tidbitsandcompany.com, I have a new menu tab that's called Vintage Art, and um, I have found my favorites, resized them perfectly for the print size that they'll look best at, and I am offering them to you at a very, very low price, but I had a lot of fun creating this winter collection, so go check it out and see if there's any pieces that you want to get printed. And I do want to mention, if you kind of know your way around graphic design, you can find um, your own images in the public domain and do the same thing. But I do love that there are shops that spend hours curating this beautiful look that you can find that resonate with you and then you can easily print them and sp instead of spending hours yourself um, resizing or finding. Anyway, I have a lot of fun doing that. so. It's quite a joy for me to be able to do that for you and create this for you. So anyway, printing. Now I display them in frames all around my home, as I'm sure you've seen. I actually feel like maybe I should do a little less of displaying vintage art and maybe a little more family photos. That's kind of a goal I have this year. But I just love vintage art in our home. I think it adds so much interest for the people that come in and look. I think um, it's so affordable that you can actually swap out pieces quite frequently to kind of refresh your space. In the mudroom, I swapped out this big frame for this beautiful winter piece I'm calling Ice Village. And then above our new baker's rack, I printed this beautiful piece called Winter Serenity. I just love it. Um, vintage art, especially, sometimes I don't feel like I like to put it behind glass because if it's just the matte paper, it almost looks like a real painting. So that's a little tip for you. Whatever you can think to do, print vintage art and get it displayed somewhere for you to look at. I remember I went to the home of a dear friend. Her name is Brooke Snow. She has a podcast called the Brooke Snow Podcast. And when I went to her home one time, I was just amazed. She had beautiful art displayed everywhere, around every corner, in every room, and it was so beautiful. It was just, it was almost like walking into an art museum. I just wanted to stop and look and soak it all in. I just, I just loved it. And so that's something that I want also in my home for people to walk around, even my kids and myself, and to see just beautiful, um, thoughtful pieces of art for us to look at and be inspired by. I'll leave you with one more tip when it comes to printing art. If you don't have your own printer that does a nice enough job, which I think those kind of home printers are pretty pricey and they use a lot of ink. So my biggest suggestion is to send it off to a printer. I just have a local shop that I send it to. Um, they do a great job. I always tell them to use matte paper for vintage art. It just looks more realistic. And um, usually they have like a cardstock. I believe they use their inkjet printers for vintage art. Um, but if I just tell them I want just the best display quality, they kind of know what to do. Uh, you can also print at Staples. I know that's in a lot of main cities. Um, and then there are a lot of online places where you can print art. Like I believe Shutterfly you could do through. I believe Walmart has a print shop. Anyway, printing is pretty easy and I just like to communicate to the printer. I just want high quality matte printing for my vintage art. All right, let's move on to the next idea I have for you, which um, I've kind of already shared a little bit about, but using art on your smart TV, or if you have a frame TV, those look really good with art. And for me, getting the frame TV, um, the biggest push was to be able to frequently switch out vintage art for our family. And we love to play this game um, where we look at a piece of art that I put up there, um, probably a new one that they haven't seen before, and I give everyone one minute to look at it and soak in the details. And then we turn it off and um, we each go around and remember or explain a detail that we saw in the photo. And you can't repeat one that someone's already said. So we go around until we just cannot share any more details. And then we flip the art back on. And it's always fun because there's always things that maybe we saw differently or other details that we missed. I found it to be a really good way to help your family look at art a little deeper 
and appreciate it a little more. And it's just, it's a really fun game. So having it on the frame TV, switching it out, um, seeing my kids kind of pause to see what new art is on there. I just think it is so much fun and just amazes me that I have the ability to turn my home into an art museum and switch it out like that. It's just amazing. Now, if you don't have a frame TV um, or a smart TV that can do that, another great option is to put it on a desktop computer screen or your laptop computer screen. And actually, I've taken my winter art collection, resized all the pieces and made them um, perfect for a frame TV and perfect for a desktop screen TV. So you can get my whole collection and switch out the wallpaper on your frame TV or your desktop TV or screen, sorry, and switch out this art regularly and do the same thing. I love having this beautiful piece of art on my computer. Um, I love switching it out and just giving my eyes something fresh and beautiful to look at. The other idea is to get art on your mobile devices. We look at those things a lot. <laughs> so I think it's a great opportunity to get vintage art on your um, phone and on your kids' phones um, or whatever d device they might have, maybe an iPad or something like that. So I've also sized my winter collection and some beautiful pieces that work great for your mobile screen. So you can download it onto your phone, set it as the screen wallpaper, and you have this new beautiful vintage art to look at. Okay, lastly, I wanna leave you with another great source and idea for you. Um, I love, if you've ever heard me talk about Well-Educated Heart, they create um, the Libraries of Hope. And one of their, um, I guess, principles is to infuse art more into our lives and that appreciation for art. So they have created some resources that are really great to get more art into my life and into my kids. So you can view these books completely free online and don't worry, I will link you in the description to the source that I'm talking about from Libraries of Hope. But they have created a new book series called My Fine Art Storybook. And I love this because it not only has beautiful art to look at already in print in full color, but it talks about the artist, the country they're from, maybe there's a story about their life. Um, so this is an incredible way to get more art into your life. Put it on your coffee table or your couch side tables, and it's just so fun to pick up and look at, read a story or two, um, and already have art printed. The other publication that they create is this series called My Book of Delights, and there's 12 of them, one for every month. Um, but this one is kind of geared more towards kids, and it introduces them to art along with poetry, maybe along with story. Um, so it is absolutely beautiful, and it's just like little snack bites of countries and nature and poetry. Anyway, so this one is also in full color and it infuses, oh, there's the Mona Lisa, but it infuses art and story um, right along with it at kind of a kid's level. But I gotta tell you, um, all of us love this. I love to just pick it up. I love to get my kids with me and we just read a little bit. Even my 14 year old, when I got the whole series, she read all of them in one day. She just loved them. They're so inspiring and simple and just exposes you to so much beautiful art. Um, so I highly recommend this one if you've got littles or even if you just want it for yourself. If you've got grandkids, it's so incredible to have to sit and read with them. So these two series are my favorite. She's got a ton of series. Um, but these two are definitely my favorites so far. So anyway, remember, you can get all of the Libraries of Hope for free online, so you can view it there and then decide if you like it enough that you might want a printed copy of them, which are really affordable. Okay, so that is my idea for getting art on your coffee table and ready for you to look at. I hope you enjoyed those ideas. If you are interested in my winter collection, please go check it out at tidbitsandcompany.com. This is kind of an experiment for me. I want to see what kind of interest is out there. And then I have like spreadsheets full of art that I've saved just for my own purposes that I would love to recreate 
into um, these formats that make it more accessible for you. So please let me know if you like this kind of stuff, if you want to see more collections. Um, I absolutely love to find art for you. So thanks so much for watching and joining me to discover how we can get more vintage art into our lives. We will talk soon and I will be back to share more inspiration for the keeper of the home.